this last example, we want to talk about another a higher degree trig equation we want to solve. This one's a little bit different, though, because I have just a sine squared of x. I don't also have a sine of x. So uh, this one actually might be a little bit simpler. I'm, what we're going to find is I don't need to factor this out to solve. So I'm going, I'm going to actually not even bother myself with a, a u substitution. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump right into this, and I'd like to get this down to just sine of x. And in order to do that, I need to take the square root of both sides, and I have to remember to take the positive and negative root of 1. So uh, when I square root both sides, the square root of sine squared of x is just sine of x, and that's going to equal positive or negative 1. And just as an, as an aside, remember that sine squared of x is the same thing as sine of x squared. So if I were to square root this, I'm essentially uh, uh, inverting the square root and the square. So that's kind of why this is just equal to sine of x. All right, so now I have this somewhat simple uh, sine equation. I want to know when sine of x equals positive or negative 1. So I can think again about my unit circle. I'm looking for where the y value is either positive 1 or negative 1. And that's going to happen in, in two places. x could equal pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2. Now let's go back to our domain restrictions. I want to know all the solutions from 0 to 4 pi. So if I add a, a, a full 2 pi to this or 4 pi over 2, I'm going to come out with 5 pi over 2. If I add another 4 pi over 2, that's equal to a 9 pi over 2. And actually, I should keep track of what 4 pi over 2 is in terms of pi's over 2. That's equal to an 8 pi over 2. And actually, it looks like 9 pi over 2. Sorry, you don't make it. Uh, you are too big. Uh, so we're going to nix that one. If I were to go down to my 3 pi over 2, I add a, a 4 pi over 2, and that's going to be 7 pi over 2. If I were to add another 4 pi over 2, I'd get 11. That's too big. So these are all of my solutions to this example here. OK, so a uh, little, little bit simpler, I think, than the factoring uh, puzzle or fa factoring problem. Uh, but we still need to just make sure we're continuing to look at all the solutions within our domain restriction. So why don't you try this final example. Uh, pause the video, give this one a shot, and we'll see how it goes. All right, and here's my solution, square root of both sides again. And uh, now the thing too that's really important to remember is that I have the positive and negative root. So if you only thought of the positive root, then you, you missed essentially half of your solutions. Uh, so uh, hopefully this, this went all right and makes sense of this. Um, go back and check out the videos if you're a little unclear about some of this stuff, and, uh, and hopefully it's going okay.